The Model 3 beans are about to spill, Q2 delivery numbers are in, and an update on my Model S delivery saga. Here is Tesla Tidbits episode number 263 for July 5th, 2017. Literally minutes after I posted Monday's show, Elon finally delivered the Model 3 news. In three tweets, Elon broke it down for us regarding Model 3. I'll just give you Elon's tweets in succession, followed by some comments. First up, Elon on Model 3 readiness for production, quote, Model 3 passed all regulatory requirements for production two weeks ahead of schedule, expecting to complete SN1 on Friday, end quote. Next, the delivery event, quote, Handover party for the first 30 customer Model 3s on the 28th. Production grows exponentially. August should be 100 cars and September above 1,500, end quote. And then production ramp up. Quote, looks like we can reach 20,000 Model 3 cars per month in December, end quote. Lastly, Elon bids owners and order holders thanks. Quote, wanted to say thanks to all that own or order to Tesla. It matters to us that you took a risk on a new car company. We won't forget, end quote. So that's a fair bit to unpack. Firstly, SN1 from the first tweet, we're making the assumption stands for serial number one, much the way that RC has been used to designate release candidates. Secondly, the final reveal appears to be July 28th, a little more than three weeks until we finally have all the official details for Model 3. And then we get into the production ramp up. 30 will be it for this month, 100 for next month, and 1500 for September, all clear enough. I'd also probably say that through September, this will be Tesla and SpaceX employees getting cars. Us mortals shouldn't expect a delivery before October. But one thing I do want to call special attention to is a bit that many, I think, are making a very bad assumption on. The last tweet on production is a bit cryptic in that it uses a monthly rate to describe an event that won't be in effect for the full month. The quote is that they'll be able to reach 20,000 cars produced per per month in December. Not that they plan to produce 20,000 cars in December. I'd imagine that the plan is to get to 5,000 produced in that final week, which would net them that rate, or even just reach 600. 146 cars produced in a single day, which would also would equate to a 20,000 car per month production rate. It's a heck of a ramp up rate, which I personally doubt they have any chance of hitting. Going from a total of just over 1,600 cars produced in three months to producing three times that in a week, even if it is the last week of the year, is a heck of a task. However, the fact that they're going to actually deliver cars in July says a lot about how far Tesla has come in its ability to hit dates. July was never even given as an actual start of delivery, despite most assuming so based on Elon's comments about the July 1st impossible date for suppliers. I'm going to stick with my prediction of 40,000 Model 3s delivered in 2017. I think that may be a bit high, but here's hoping the factory can prove me wrong. Good luck and Godspeed, guys. Speaking of production, the Q2 delivery numbers are in. Tesla's press release details the numbers. The company delivered 22,000 vehicles, 12,000 of which were Model S and 10,000 of which were Model X. Deliveries for the first half totaled 47,100, which was on the low end of guidance. There would have been a better delivery count, but Tesla cites a production shortage for their high-end 100-kilowatt-hour battery packs. They state that until June, the production lagged demand by as much as 40%. Once the resolution was in place, Tesla says June 2017 ranks as one of the best delivery months in the company's history. The reason for the production lag is cited as the new assembly lines for the battery packs. Production for the quarter totaled 25,708 for the quarter and 51,126 for the first half of the year. As usual, Tesla had many vehicles in transit that didn't get delivered in time for quarterly numbers. The statement reiterates the story from above as well, that the first Model 3 will come off the line this week and that 30 customers will be given their cars at a party at the Fremont factory on the 28th. Lastly tonight, just keeping you up to date with my Model S delivery saga, John McNeil, president of Global Sales and Service, contacted me via Twitter to get my name in the VIN of my car to do some research into what caused my issue. Later in the day, I then received a phone call from Joe DiMaggio, regional delivery operations manager for the Midwest, and discussed the series of events as well. All my conversations were great and both apologized for the situation. I provided Joe in detail the ways in which I think this could have been avoided, or at least the blow softened much better. First and foremost, I just don't think delivery should be scheduled if a service center doesn't actually have the car. It totally eliminates this as a potential issue by doing so. 
Granted, the delivery process is extended by doing this, but in my opinion, never having to tell a customer you don't have their car when they're standing there is worth that. Secondly, part of this could have been resolved if I had been called on delivery day. I did see, after I was already at the service center, that an automated email had been sent, much like the original one, that was scheduling that was rescheduling for 9 p.m. I told Joe that if you're going to reschedule an appointment on the day that it's been scheduled for, a phone call needs to happen. Heck, any reschedule might be worth a phone call. And then lastly, when you fail to avoid this situation and you've already disappointed a customer, putting them in a vehicle without the features that they're going to have is pretty rough. The dual motors didn't matter as much to me since it's at least not winter here, but the lack of autopilot really was kind of the icing on the cake with this whole thing. Tesla will be providing my first scheduled maintenance on the house as a thank you for my patience in this situation. I do thank both John and Joe for working with me, and somehow I suspect I'll be getting a call fairly early tomorrow morning asking when I can be in Columbus to pick up my car. You can find the links to today's full stories in the show description. This show operates on a value-for-value value model. If you get some value out of what I do each day, please consider supporting me at patreon.com slash Tidbits. We've got another new super patron today, Dory Guberman. Thanks so much for joining up, Dory. This adds to super patrons John Waltower, Drew Schuyler, John Waller, Mark and Sarah Thomas, Ryan Scarborough, Lee Sweet, and William Henry Crew III. Thanks a ton to all of you as well. As I always say, if you have no extra scratch available, I totally understand. Please show your love with positive feedback and subscriptions on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, and other services across the internet. Or keep the show referral code in mind if you're in the market for a Tesla. That code is ts.la slash jon4602, and it'll get you $1,000 off the car and free supercharging for the life of the vehicle. That's all for today. If you have feedback for me, the best way to be heard is to tweet at Tesla Tidbits. I'll see you back here again tomorrow. Until then, keep it charged and hit the road.